analytics with a storied history of timing the markets going back for decades, from the days when I was a hedge fund manager, even longer. Now, this man has a tremendous track record when it comes to spotting tops and bottoms, not just in stocks, but also in cryptocurrencies. Now, DeMarc nailed the meltdown in February of last year. He nailed the bottom roughly a month later. He called the pullback in late October, as well as with the election day bottom. So what does he think about the market right now? you got to give him some props and chops because of what he said. Well, you know, this man's got a host of proprietary indicators, unemotional indicators, and they've been positive on stocks since the big bottom in March of last year, when DeMarc made a truly legendary call to buy. For months, though, he's been watching and waiting, watching and waiting for signs of a peak. But he's got a strict methodology. To DeMarc and his team, it's not a real top unless the averages hit his price target models right as his timing countdown fires off a sell signal. So there's a couple of, process, couple of pieces involved. And if you need to know more, may I suggest you go to his website, which is S Symbolic, and that's S-Y-M-B-O-L-I-K, S-Y-M-B-O-L-I-K. And that powers his charts and it gives you a real good sense of it that you miss some of this or try and understand it better. So far, DeMarc's models for time and price just haven't coincided. So rather than a major top leading to a brutal decline, we kind of get these garden variety pullbacks, maybe 5 to 10% or less, and then the rally gets going again. But now it's different. Now DeMarc's timing and price models are finally in alignment, and he thinks we could soon see a significant top in both the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100, somewhat similar to what Larry Williams was saying. I want you to start here. This is a daily chart of the S&P. You can see that when the S&P approaches DeMarc's price targets, it tends to sell off. <laughs> Pretty obvious, right? Uh, and that's exactly what's happened in early September and mid-February. However, he also has a thing called a 13-session countdown pattern that tells him when a rally is likely to run out of steam. We never got to 13 in September, okay? We never got to 13 in February. As a result, the declines were muted. Hey, by the way, same thing happened in June. DeMarc warned us that a major sell-off could be on the way. Market melted down hard a week later. But then it came right back because we didn't have the makings of a real peak. DeMarc thinks this time is indeed different. The S&P 500 blew through his price target of 4426. And his 13-day sell countdown is currently on day 12. This pattern says it's time to sell when it gets to 13. So what we're doing, obviously, I'm trying to give this ahead of time. I'm not trying to give you after. So where do we go from here? Simple. The S&P needs to make one more higher high, meaning it needs to go above 4430 in this case, up only seven points from here. That could be done. It needs to open above today's close. It needs to make a higher low than last Thursday. I know these are very complicated series of circumstances, but... You know, Thursday's closing high of 4419. That could easily happen tomorrow if the S&P rallies oh so slightly in the morning, as it has lately. If you notice, at 9.30, a quarter of 10, and then it hangs in there for the rest of the day. So that is a very threatening pattern, and I want you to notice it. Tomorrow's day 13. It's pretty, a, pretty much of a pivotal session. We're not done. It, it's not just the S&P 500. Now I'm going to have you take a look at the QQQ, the ETF that mirrors the NASDAQ 100, which contains the 100 largest non-financial stocks in the NASDAQ composite. This tech-heavy index blew through DeMarc's price target last week, and it's also on day 12 of his 13-day sell countdown. That countdown will go to 13 and fire off a sell signal in the moment. Here we go. The QQQ closes above 369, up only a few points from here. So we're really close. If the S&P and the NASDAQ 100 both give you these sell signals at roughly the same time, DeMarc thinks it could get real ugly. I don't know anyone's thinking this. It's the first time this has been a real possibility since the bottom in March of last year. Of course, if he's wrong, there's a chance the S&P and NASDAQ could both give you a quick two or three day rally in a good news environment. But right now, DeMarc thinks a meaningful top is far more likely. Remember, these are percentage games. All right, how about the Dow? This one's really intriguing. Ever since late last year, DeMarc points out that the Dow's traded erratically. Yes. In a pattern that he finds eerily similar to, to early 1929, in the months leading up to the Great Crash, he calls it the seven megaphone pattern, okay? Because it looks like a megaphone, and it's got seven stages. We've seen a series of higher highs coupled with lower lows. You could say the Dow's been turning and turning in a widening gyre, um, if you want to put a little poetry to it. That pattern's resolved itself with a big breakout to the upside, which again is really similar, yes, to the big rally in 1929 before the peak. All right, let's take a look at it. In 1929, DeMarc notes, that was the seven-step pattern, and after the final step, the Dow Jones collapsed under its own weight. 
He's not saying we're in for another crash year, but the Dow's currently in step seven of this pattern. Once that current rally runs out of steam, he does expect to see a significant sell-off, not of this magnitude. That was extraordinary. Beyond the stock market, DeMarc's also concerned of all things crypto. Now, I want you to look at the daily chart of Bitcoin. DeMarc's models have been incredibly accurate when it comes to crypto. I really loved it, possibly because there are no fundamentals here, which means, well, the charts are much more important. We got a completed 13-day sell off, uh, sell countdown in April, all right, right before Bitcoin got cut in half. Then we got a 13-day buy countdown last month, right before uh, things bottomed. But and this is a huge button. DeMarc's short-term indicators didn't confirm that bottom, so it's, to him, a questionable one, even though Bitcoin's made a substantial move off that low. There's another reason why he doesn't trust last month's lows for crypto. Normally, bottoms happen when? On bad news, not good news. Securities finally bottom when all the weak candy traders capitulate and dump their positions. I always talk about that. However, when Bitcoin found its floor last month just under 30,000, how did it do? Well, we didn't get any bad news. On the contrary, Tesla's Elon Musk, Twitter's Jack Dorsey, and ARK Invest Kathy Wood we're all promotional speakers at a major crypto event that weekend. For DeMarc, that makes the recent run in Bitcoin feel less like a meaningful bottom, more like a temporary short-covering rally. Meanwhile, both Bitcoin and Ethereum have recorded what DeMarc calls nine setups, which are typically associated with interim highs. Sure enough, we got a major crypto breakdown today, and it's possible this is just the beginning of a larger decline. So I know I threw a lot at you, but this is the bottom line. The charts as interpreted by the legendary Tom DeMarc suggest the market's getting close to a top, especially the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100. He's not too keen on the Dow Jones Industrial Average either. And if you were thinking of hiding your assets in Bitcoin while stocks roll over, DeMarc says, think again. Daniel in California. Daniel, 